So we have found out this trail losses in DC series uh, machine. Okay, assuming both machines are identical and uh, they are equally excited. Okay. Uh, the reason behind equal excitation is that I want to make the iron losses equal and through mechanical coupling, I am making the mechanical losses equal. Okay, so the principle behind this operation is equal excitation. Okay, that you should uh, remember. So next we'll move to efficiency of motor or motor efficiency. So motor efficiency. We will be knowing the electrical input to the motor. So motor input. So motor input is equals to observe the voltage across the motor is only V1. It is not the entire voltage V. So motor input will be V1 into I1. I1 is the current flowing through motor as well as generator field. But voltage across motor is only V1. Okay. So therefore, motor input is motor input. One slide is missed here. So motor efficiency. Motor input is V1 into I1. Next, motor losses. Calculation in all these tests are same. Once I find these stray losses, the procedure is different in up to finding the stray losses. Once the stray losses are known, okay, the calculation of all the machines will remain same. Okay, to get the stray losses, we have to deduct copper losses from the main input. Once I get the stray losses, add all the copper losses of that particular motor or particular machine, then find input and output, find efficiency. So this is the common uh, uh, step. Okay. So motor losses, WM. I will call it as WM is equals to uh, armature copper loss plus field copper loss plus stray loss. So WM is equals to and right armature motor armature current is I1 square RA motor field current is I1 square RAC plus stray loss it is WS. Okay. So, motor output. Is equals to. This motor input minus losses. So that is. P1 I1 minus WM. So efficiency IM is equals to motor output divided by motor input. The time is equals to it is V1 I1 minus WM divided by V1 I1 into 100. 
So this is motor efficiency. Okay. Generator efficiency. So generator efficiency, though we can calculate using this test, but it may not be accurate. Why? Because we are making a shunt machine to operate as a separately excited machine. Okay. Shunt machine, shunt generator is made to operate as separately excited generator. Therefore, the performance will change slightly. Okay. So whatever the efficiency we calculate of generator using field uh, test, it is not accurate efficiency of generator. But it will be the accurate efficiency of motor, no doubt. Whatever the motor efficiency we get, that is the accurate efficiency of motor. Whereas generator efficiency is not accurate. One thing. Second thing why it will not be accurate is, I am loading the generator until motor reaches its rated uh, current. I am not loading the generator until generator reaches its rated uh, current. This is one more thing. As per the procedure, what we have seen, I have to load the generator until motor takes rated current. So what does this mean? Generator may be fully loaded or uh, may not be fully loaded. So the full load condition of motor doesn't ensure full load condition of generator. This already we have seen in Hopkinson test. Okay. So there is no uh, uh, guarantee that both machines are equally loaded all the time. The loading may be different. So whatever the test readings I have taken, these test readings are at the full load condition of motor. But what about generator? We don't know whether it is at full load or uh, at uh, other than full load. So this way, the efficiency what I calculate of generator using field test may not be the full load efficiency. Okay, And because it is made to operate a separately excited machine, the performance may vary. Okay, uh, Second thing is, the effect of armature reaction in generator is not uh, addressed in the field circuit because the current drawn by the field winding of generator is not of the generator voltage from the generated voltage it is from the motor input voltage so if there is a demagnetizing effect occurring okay if there is a demagnetizing effect occurring in the armature due to armature flux then the motor current is not addressing that issue And even cross magnetizing effect is not addressed. Therefore, the armature reaction effects may not be neutralized in field test in the generator, not in motor, in generator I am talking. So these are all the reasons why the generator efficiency may not be accurate as that of motor using field test. But still I can calculate the efficiency. But still I can calculate the efficiency. So please remember one thing. The field winding of generator is only connected in series. It is not removed from the generator outside. If I connect field supply in parallel with armature, that will become self-excited. If I connect field supply to the external source, that will become separately excited. Separately excited doesn't mean field winding is outside the generator. You should not think like that. Okay. It is there in the generator. It is on the projected poles only. But only the supply is somewhat different from the armature connection. That is separate excitation. Fine. But still we can find out the efficiency of generator though it may not be accurate.
Am I audible? Yes, sir. Was I audible continuously? Because I think I got some. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, whenever you explain these tests, you should be explaining all these special conditions in the exam. That will fetch you full marks. Okay. So generator output. So the output screen is output. not visible. Not visible. I think. Yeah, so, there is. A, I got it. There was a disconnection. That that is the reason. Now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the generator output. Output of generator is across the load. The current through load is I two. The current uh, of the generator is I two. Voltage across generator is V two. So generator output is V two I two. Okay. Then losses in generator or generator losses. W G is equals to armature copper loss. Plus field copper loss, plus tray loss. So W G is equals to I two square R A plus I two square R A C. Sorry, I one square R S because the current in field winding of generator is I one. R S is connected in series with motor. Current in this is I one. So I one square R S it is. Sorry. Okay. Plus W S. I am getting some network issues. Are you screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I one square R S E W S. Okay. No. Then generator input. Is equals to uh, generator output plus losses. So this is V into I two plus W G. Uh, it is very simple test. Field test is very simple. Even practical also it is very simple. Okay. Uh, we can take the full load condition also. We can take partial load condition also. So we can have one reading. We can have multiple readings. Efficiency is equals to output by input. Into hundred. So percentage efficiency of generator is output is V two I two divided by input is V two I two plus W G. please don't try to by heart these equations try to understand how the equations are coming so you need not to by heart it because if you assign one current wrongly and use the original equation now suppose in the circuit diagram in exam explanation if you take this as i1 some books they have followed generator current as i1 i don't know whether what is followed in uh, our manual i did not see that before taking this Okay, and motor current it is taken as I two. If you do that, and if you write these equations, okay, your entire explanation will be incorrect. You will lose if it is for ten marks. You will lose almost eight marks. So you should be careful of what current assignment you are doing in the circuit, and 
whether you are writing the equations in the calculations accordingly that is compulsory Next, we will solve examples. Example. A field test on two similar tramway motors. Uh, tramway motor, traction motor, okay, uh, high starting torque motor, these all are for series motors only. Okay, uh, there are different names for uh, series motors. Okay, uh, series motors we know as we use it for traction applications also. Okay, so most of the um, What we say? Uh, locomotive applications use series motor. Large locomotive applications use series motor because of its uh, large starting torque. Okay, so tramway motor. Tramway is also a type of uh, locomotion locomotive only. Okay, a small train you can say. Okay, the local trains you will get na small local trains. You can say that a guided uh, path vehicle. Okay. A traction motor is for using any traction applications. It can be in trains, it can be in uh, uh, four wheelers also okay, for tractive effort. So these are used in most of the traction applications because of their larger starting time. Okay. So whatever the uh, electric trains you see, most of the electric trains employ uh, DC series motors. Okay. Uh, I don't know what Metro. Uh, because metro is running at 750 volts dc the operating voltage of metro is 750 volt dc i think that even that uses uh, the uh, what we say series motors only okay so a field test was done on Two similar tramway motors this is an example from the question paper the following results were obtained Following results were obtained. So for motor, armature current, you can call it as armature current or line current or field current, all are same. 56 amperes, armature voltage. Five ninety volts. Okay. Voltage drop across field or field voltage. Forty volts. And there is a small mistake. This is a solved example in the textbook. It is a question paper example, and also it is a solved example in the textbook. But there is a mistake in the solution in the textbook. So generator. Armature current. Forty four amps. Armature voltage 400 volts. 
field voltage 40 volts or field voltage drop you take field voltage drop 40 volts resistance of armature armature resistance of each machine it is 0.3 ohms find the efficiency of motor and generator find efficiency of motor and generator So, first draw the circuit diagram, then we will write the given things. Okay. So, I have a motor, and I have a generator, a mechanical component. So, when we say field test means, Machines are mechanically coupled, fields are connected in series with the motor. Okay, that is by default. Again, I need not to mention in the problem statement. Because it is mentioned to just save the time and energy, I did not use that. And always these machines are connected on load. Okay, this just started on load. We never start uh, these machines without load. And also I will tell you what, as per the statement, what mistake is done in the solution. So this is V, which we don't know. Line uh, supply voltage is not given. So different currents are mentioned. Motor armature current 56 amps. So let us take this as I1 and this as I2. Okay. So I1 is equal to 56 amps. I2 is 56 amps. Now what is V1? V1 is the voltage across the motor and that constitutes field as well as armature okay but what is given in the statement i2 is 44 sorry i2 is 44 right yeah sorry sorry, sorry. but in the problem statement what given is The armature voltage is 590 volts. Let me take this as VA. Forty volts here, forty volts here. Now what it has been done in the textbook is they have taken V1 as 590 uh, plus 40 as V, supply voltage V. Okay. But V1 is, V is not 590 plus 40. They have taken V1 as 590. That is a problem. As per the given statement, armature voltage is 590. And field voltage is 40 volts. So there is 590 volt across armature and 40 volt across field. So what is V1 now? 590 plus 40. That is 630. But what in the textbook they have done is V1 they have taken 590. To that they added this 40 and made it as 630. So they have taken V as 630. But actually as per the given statement V is 40 plus 590 plus 40. 
it will be 570 670 so this is the mistake as per the given statement or they may instead of giving it as armature voltage if they would have given motor voltage it would have been correct if in the statement was given as motor voltage equals to 590 volts it would have been correct but unfortunately even in the question paper they have given it as ar armature voltage only so the problem now arises is the person who followed this question whether he will follow the solution of his own or whether he is follow he will follow the solution of textbook has to be observed getting my point yes sir if a paper setter will follow blindly the solution of textbook then his solution is wrong this happens many a times okay and if he follows his own solution okay then that solution will be correct that what we follow i will not follow the solution of textbook because i can't change the problem statement only as per given in the question paper if they would have mentioned here motor voltage then it would have been correct field voltage plus armature voltage equals to 590 but in the statement it is clearly mentioned armature voltage is 590 volts field voltage drop is again 40 volts for motor only in case suppose they would have mentioned armature voltage drop equal to 590 and they would have not mentioned this part then i had all the uh, uh, freedom to assume v1 as 590 or to take v1 as 590 because field voltage is not mentioned so in that case you would write a note that since field voltage drop across the of the motor is not mentioned clearly the armature voltage itself is taken to be as the uh, motor voltage v1 then follow the solution okay so one thing when these kind of mistakes will be visible is when you understand the conceptual part of this uh, testing clearly okay so this is very important in any test or in any analysis or in any concept understanding concept is important because many a times even question paper setter will also make a mistake and you will follow the solution and most of the times because of finishing the evaluation uh, many people who has not handled the subject will also start evaluating because a evaluation center needs the number of scripts to be evaluated first these are practical issues inevitable this will happen everywhere okay so it is important that uh, you should be mentioning these kind of things now it is very straightforwardly given that armature voltage is 590 volt field voltage drop is 40 volt so we have to take like that only so my v1 is 590 plus 40 my v is v1 plus 40 so my v is 670 v1 is 630 in the textbook, they have taken V1 as 590, V as 630. So, solution of textbook is incorrect. So, this I wanted to mention. Got it? Next point. Uh, then, RA. RA is 0.3 ohms. Then uh, V2 is 400 volts. Yeah. V1 is VA. Let me take it as VSC. And here this is VSC. So VA plus VSC. equals to 590 plus 40 is 630 then what is v v is v1 plus vsc g 
uh, let me take this as motor and generator just for the sake of understanding these cannot be different voltages please remember because if the voltages are different then excitation will be different i want equal excitation therefore these voltages generally will remain same they won't change generally they will remain same the voltages will be different provided the field winding are having different resistances okay because that is voltage drop isc into rsc that is voltage drop so if voltage drops are different means resistances are different so equal current anyway it is flowing giving the equal excitation okay so when i say identical machines the field resistance must be equal but practically it may be different this is equals to it is 630 plus 40 so it is 670 volts 670 volts okay stray losses calculation of stray losses so wst sorry input to the set is equals to v into i1 so v is 670 into i1 is given 56 is equals to watts okay output of this set is equals to v2 i2 so i1 is 56 let me mark here in the circuit i2 is 44 uh, v2 is uh, we have mentioned it is 400 yeah so 400 into 44 17600 so if you see the grand efficiency it is almost 50% is it 17600 grand output by grand input is almost 50% therefore total losses in the set wt is equals to v into i1 minus v to i2 so wt is equals to it is 37520 minus Ten thousand six hundred. Nineteen thousand nine hundred. Nineteen thousand nine hundred. Twenty. Nine twenty watts. Okay. Yeah. Now stray losses. Total stray losses. wst is equals to total losses minus total copper losses so total copper losses wcut is equals to i can write i1 square ra plus 
I1 square RSC. First, I will write what we have seen. Plus I2 square RA. Plus I1 square RSC. So here, if you want to find RSC, you can find it. You can do that also. I know current through series field. I know voltage across series field. You can find RSC and you can calculate. Okay. So here, field copper loss. Uh, I1 square RSC can also be written as VSC into I1. Okay. Because RSC equal to VSC by I1. So one denominator I1, numerator I1 square, or one I1 will remain. VSC into I1. So I will rewrite this just for the sake of understanding. Okay. See, when we have to understand the things, even if the things become a little bit lengthier in writing, you do that. But understand. I1 square RA plus VSA into I1 plus I2 square RA plus VSA into I1. So this I can write I1 square RA plus I2 square RA plus 2 VSE into I1. Now substitute. Total copper losses equals to so 56 square into 0.3 plus 44 square into 0.3 plus 2 into 40 into 56. So it is 6,001.6. Is it right? Yes, sir. So these are total copper losses. Okay. Therefore, WST is equal to total stray losses. Total losses are 19,920 minus 6,001. equals to it is 13,918.4 watts therefore stray loss in each machine WST by 2. These statements, whatever we write now, these stray loss in each machine, total stray loss, these are very important sometimes. You should not forget writing in your solution. Even when you are practicing, even when you are noting down, and even when you are writing an exam. That will give you a very clear picture. Motor efficiency. Is motor input. PN. Is equals to. V1 into I1. So V1 is 630. Into I1 is. 56.
watts okay motor losses wm is equals to uh, copper loss plus stray loss so copper loss are field copper loss and armature copper loss so it is I1 square RA plus VSC into I1 plus WS. So 56 square into 0.3 plus 14 to 56 plus 6959.2. W. Ten thousand hundred and forty. Ten thousand hundred and forty. One forty. Point something is there? No, sir. Watts. Okay, therefore, motor output. P out is equals to P in minus losses, input minus losses, equals to 35,280 minus 10,140. Twenty five thousand one forty. Watts. So efficiency of motor is equals to P out by P in. This implies so twenty five one forty divided by thirty five two eighty. In 200. 71. 71. 70. 71.2%. 71.2%. Similarly, generator efficiency. Generator output. P out is equals to V2 I2 into 17,600. Seventeen thousand six hundred watts. Then generator losses. WG is equals to uh, copper loss plus stray loss. Okay. So armature copper loss is I2 square RA plus VSC into I1 because generator field is connected in series with motor field plus tray loss, plus tray loss uh, WS. So this comes out to be WG is equals to 44 square into 0.3 plus 14 to 56 plus 6959.2.
जनरेटर इनपुट पी इन इज इक्वल टू पी औट प्लस लॉस This is P out is seventeen thousand six hundred plus nine seven eight zero. Twenty seven. Twenty. Twenty seven thousand three eighty. Three eighty watts. Okay. Therefore, efficiency of generator is equal to P out by P in. Sixty-four point eight. Sixty-four point eight. Okay. So you just observe the efficiencies of motor and generator. One is seventy-one, other is sixty-two. And if you observe the efficiencies of motor and generator in previous tests, they are near to each other. One is eighty-eight, the other is ninety-one or ninety-two. Or eighty nine like that. So this huge difference between efficiencies is because of incorrectness of computations. In uh, not uh, I cannot say incorrectness of computations. I am not making the operation of DC generator as the shunt DC generator here. I am making it as separately excited DC generator. And since the field is connected to a separate supply, okay. Uh, i cannot correct the armature reaction effect that is the biggest reason why the uh, efficiency is much lower than that of motor though both are identical machines and equally excited but efficiencies are very much different because there is no correction for armature reaction effect okay if i want to do the correction for armature reaction effect then motor performance will uh, change okay the motor performance will change here i cannot change this therefore the armature reaction effect is not fully considered hence the value of efficiency whatever i get from this test maybe in is uh, incorrect okay not fully correct i can say not fully correct okay but whatever i am taking it for motor it is fully correct okay uh, and why this test becomes important for series machines is we generally don't use series generators in practical applications we never use a dc series generators we more uh, concentrate on dc series motor applications so if i have a test that will give a, a quite accurate results for dc motor series motor then that test is valid for me i don't worry about generator okay i don't worry about generator because practically uh, very uh, i actually in person i never came across a practical dc series generator uh, frankly to say so practically dc series generators have very less applications or no more applications we can say therefore uh, the dc series motor quite easily and quite accurately we can calculate the efficiency and performance parameters using this test so that becomes valid for dc series motor okay so i will stop here at its time up for the next class uh, this example we will solve in the next class and we will see uh, the next test ahead okay so any doubts so far any doubts no sure